Chain of responsibility is a design pattern which can be used to handle a request through a series of handlers. There can be multiple ways in which this design pattern can be used, but it should more or less follow the basic design principle of having a chain of handler objects, either processing the request or passing it on to the next handler. In this video, I am going to show you two different real-world scenarios with code examples in which this design pattern fits perfectly. So stay tuned and watch this video till the end or you will miss vital bits and pieces. This design pattern promotes the decoupling of request sender and request receiver because the handlers can also be dynamically added using the application's configuration. It is also useful when we have requests coming in belonging to several different categories and we want to have a system which will process the request by sending it through a list of handlers which will either process the request along the way or it will reject it altogether. So the logic to implement this design pattern is simple. We create an interface contract for a handler. The handler must be able to queue a next handler and process a request which has been sent to it. The request itself could follow a specific interface contract or not, depending on the scenario which is being implemented using the chain of responsibility design pattern. So the first example is about validating data in multiple steps and adding more steps when further validation requirements come in. Chain of responsibility handlers can thus be added to the validation chain while keeping the entire implementation as modular. So the first thing that we need to do is to create the interface for the handler. And let's just name it iHandler. Now it needs to have two methods. The first one is going to be to set the next handler and another one to process the incoming request. So to set the next handler, we can have a method which will accept an argument for the i handler type and the next method could be called as process. So void process, but we also need to provide this process method with an argument of the incoming request. So for that, I am just going to create a very basic class and let's just call it request. Now we are going to use this request to validate an object. So this is going to have an object. Let's call it data. And we also need to have a list of validation messages because we are going to validate the object using multiple handlers and we are going to store any validation messages into the request itself and then we will propagate the request to the next handler itself. So for that purpose, I am going to add a property and we also need to initialize that property using the constructor of this request class. So the property is validation messages and it is being initialized in this constructor for the request class. Okay, so now we can use this request type as an argument in this process method for the iHandler interface. So let's just do that. Okay, so now to create any handler, we just need to create classes which will implement from this iHandler object. But as you can see, the set next handlers implementation is more or less similar for every other handler object. So what we will do is we will create a base handler. And this base handler is going to have the implementation of all the common functionality and then we can create other classes implementing from this base handler which are going to have their own handler logic. So first in this base handler I am going to add a private field for the next handler which is of the i handler type because we are going to accept the argument which is of the type i handler interface. Next let's just have a constructor for this base handler and we are going to set this next handler as null because we are not going to initialize it. It could happen that the last handler in the chain can have the next handler as a null value so that we can compare it before um, you know passing on the request to the next handler. Now let's just implement this set next handler function definition. And what we are going to do is we are just going to assign this handler to this next handler and that's pretty much it. We also need to provide the implementation for this process method and let's just do that. So base handler is not going to have any functionality for this process method. So what we need to do is we need to declare it as a virtual method. And you know what, let's just also add public 
to both of these methods so now in this process we just need to throw a new not implemented exception because this method is not going to do anything so our base handler is finished and the only thing we need to do before we move on to create our validation handlers is to create an object which we are going to validate for that purpose what we can do is we can create a person class and it can contain a couple of different properties which we can validate using our handlers so class person and then let's add some properties to it so i have added a couple of properties which is name age and income and we are going to validate the values the first handler is going to validate the age of the person for its maximum value so let's just call it max age handler and it is going to inherit the functionality of the base handler class we need to implement and override the process method from the base handler class so let's just do that public override and then process we don't need to call the base implementation so first what we will do is we will check if the request has valid data or not so if request dot data we need to typecast it into the person object so is person then what we will do is we will simply validate its age so if person dot age if it's greater than let's say 55 then it is going to be invalid so request dot validation messages dot add and then let's add a string of message like invalid age and then what we can do is we can send the request to the next validation handler so if underscore next handler is not equals to null if it exists then we will simply send the request to the next handler by calling its process method and sending in the request as the argument now if the request data is not found then we need to throw an exception so let's just throw a normal exception with the message like this one invalid message data all right so our max age handler is finished and now we can create two more handlers for the other properties of this person class which our name and income so these handlers are going to be more or less the same like this max age handler the only difference is going to be the logic and the invalid message which we need to use for the handler so i'm just going to copy and paste those handlers so this is the max name length handler which is checking the um, the maximum length if the length is bigger than 10 then a validation will be added and the third one is the max income handler which is comparing the income with the maximum value so we have our handlers with us now the only thing that we need to do is to test our chain of responsibility handlers code for that the first thing we need to do is to create a person object like this one over here this person object has the properties name age and income set with certain values which we can validate using the chain of responsibility validation handlers and now we need to create a request which will be sent to the validation handlers so we have created a new request object with the data property set with the person object now let's create the individual validation handlers first the max age handler over here next one is the max name length handler and then finally the max income handler now what we need to do is we need to set the next handlers for the first two handlers so the max ages next handler is going to be this max name length handler and um, the next handler for this one is going to be this max income handler so what we can do is we can simply call um, let's say max age handlers dot set next handler and we can provide the argument like this and for this handler we can set the next handler as max income handler and now finally we can process the request for that we simply need to um, call in the process method of the first handler in the chain so max age handler dot process and then let's provide the request as an argument so our code to process the request has been done and now we need some way to actually view the results 
For that, we can simply write to the console all of the validation messages which have been added to the request. Now let's run the code and see if it is working or not. So you can see that we have two validation messages for the invalid age and income, but the invalid message for the name is not being printed. As you remember, the name should be invalid if it is bigger than 10 characters, but this name is not. So this is why the validation is not being printed. If we will increase the name's length, then the validation should pop up too. So let's just increase the length of this name and then let's see what the result is going to be after that. So now all of the three validations are being printed, including the invalid name length because the length of the name is um, bigger than which is required. So this is how this uh, design pattern can be used to validate an object in steps like each validation handler is going to process its own code logic and then it is going to pass on the request object with the data onto the next validation handler. This makes it easier to add new validation handlers. The second example is about providing handlers for multiple request types. If the incoming request type will match with any handler then it will be processed. Otherwise the handler will send the request to the next handler in queue. So for this example, I'm going to show you the implementation of a very simple payment processor. So whenever we go to a shopping website, then when we are about to check out with the items which are in the cart, we are presented with several different payment options which we can use to pay for our purchases. Now what we can do is we can use the chain of responsibility design pattern to create multiple different handlers for each request type. If the payment type matches any specific handler then that handler will process that payment request if it doesn't matches then it will simply send the payment request to the next handler so the first thing that i'm going to do is to create an enumeration for the different payment types so we can have the payment type for paying using a credit card using a debit card payment wallet net banking and so on now let's have a class for the payment method which is going to be the request which we are going to pass around so class payment method and let's add a property to it public payment type and then you know what let's just call it payment type we can use the same classes for the base handler and the request because all we need to do is to be able to queue the next handler and to be able to wrap the data inside a request object so let's just write the code for our first handler which is going to handle the payment method request which belongs to the payment type of credit card. So to do that we can create a class and let's just call it credit card handler. I mean to process the credit card requests. This is going to implement from the base handler and now we need to implement the, um, the base process method so public override void and then process we don't need to call the base implementation and now we need to do the same thing if request dot data is of the payment method class type actually payment method then we can process the request otherwise we can simply throw an exception that no handler is found to process the payment method so let's just do that else throw new exception with the message and the message can be no handler found okay so now in this if condition block we can um, you know first check if the payment type of the incoming data matches with the type which this handler can process if it does then we can process the payment method otherwise we can pass it on to the next handler so that the next handler can check if it can process it as well and then the chain will continue to do that for all of the available handlers so if payment method dot payment type equals to payment type dot credit card then what we can do is you know what let's just write something to the console to show that yeah we can process or we are processing the request so console dot write line and you know what just write a message 
like processing the credit card payment and yep that's pretty much it we also need to provide an else if block for this if condition because if this handler is not able to process this request then it needs to send it to the next handler and before we do that we need to check if the next handler is available or not so if next handler is not equals to null then we can simply send the request um, to the next handler so underscore next handler dot process and then send in the request as an argument and now finally we can have the else block because if these two conditions are failed then it will mean that the payment method or the payment type which belongs to the requests payment method does not have any handler to handle it actually we wrote the wrong message before because if the request or data is invalid then we simply need to throw an exception that the payment data is invalid so the message is wrong over here so i'm just going to copy this same exception message and let's just change this one so this should be invalid payment data and if none of the handlers are able to process the request because if we are at the last handler the next handler is going to be null and then the else part will come in it will simply mean that this exception will be thrown now we can have three more handlers for the uh, for the remaining three payment types and i'm not going to bore you for writing the code for the rest of the three items so i'm just going to copy and paste it so these are the remaining three handlers the debit card handler the payment wallet and the net banking handler the code is more or less the same only this condition is different so instead of checking for the payment type of credit card the handlers are checking for their individual payment types and the message is also different if they are going to process the requests data and the rest of this stuff is pretty much same so now let's implement this code and see if it is working or not okay so the first thing that we need to do is to create an object for the payment method and we can do that by creating a new object out of its class so payment method equals to new payment method and let's also provide the um, the payment type the initial payment type which we are going to use so payment type dot um, let's use credit card next we need to create the objects for all of the different handlers so um, this is the credit card handler the debit card handler and so on and now we need to queue the next handlers so for credit card handler we can set the next handler as debit card handler and for debit card we can set payment wallet for payment wallet we can set net banking it's pretty simple but in real world production scenarios this code is not this simple because um, so many different things need to be validated and so many checks are in place and now finally we can send in a new request object to the first handler which is this one this credit card handler and let's just call its process method and i'm going to provide a new request object the data can be set with the payment method object which we created above over here and now let's just run the code because if the handler is going to process the data then it is going to write to the console so we will see the output in the console so the message is processing the credit card payment and now if we will change the payment type to some other type like net banking then the message should change processing net banking payment similarly for you know what payment wallet we can have a different message so you can see that the handler which is supposed to handle the request depending on the type of the request is handling the request otherwise it is simply passing it on to the next handler so this kind of scenario is easier to implement using the chain of responsibility design pattern so do you know any other scenarios in which it can be used feel free to share them with us using the comments area and of course if you guys have any questions then feel free to ask them if you like the video then place a like on it and also hit the subscribe button it will make sure that you will always stay updated with the latest videos and you will also be helping to grow this channel in a meaningful way and with that, I will take my leave and I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, have a great day.